Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Jeff H. Mallum's Being an Author podcast, which is me. Not the podcast, but the author, Jeff H. Mallum. Hello. I'm sorry in advance if I kind of sound a little exhausted today. Well, I am melting in the heat. I, I can't really explain why. I actually usually love summer. I love heat. I love sun. I hate winter. But somehow this year's summer of, oh, of 2021 kind of breaks me. And I, I really can't explain why. But however, that's not supposed to be the topic for today. Today is about something different, and you might have already read it in the title. It is about what I read in literature. So what does an author who writes books, novels, what does he read? Or what do they read? But before I start answering that, I, I have a small little problem with the cable down here. Ugh. Should be fixed now. Okay. Actually, I could make this episode very short by just saying nothing. But that is only half the truth. And it's not really the truth, but it's close to the truth. The thing is that I've always been a little, let's say, well... If, if I am creatively active in any kind of subject, in any kind of thematic, then I really try to consume nothing of the same matter to not get too much ins inspiration. Or not, not to, to not get inspiration, but to not like, I don't know, someone, well, people tend to steal. And I really, really never ever want anyone to tell me, hey, you're just stealing the way, for example, you write your books. Um, there's another example of that, uh, which was when I was writing a game design document. Um, I made sure that when, when I started writing a game design document, this is not about the books yet, but I will, I will come to the books, the, the literature, novel books, you know. Um, but when I was writing a game design document, I, well, googled a lot about how to write this, but I did not look at one because I did not want to steal the structure and the ideas and the, the kind of writing or whatever. Um, I realized this, that it was different when I was uh, creating RPG Maker video games in my, well, adult childhood, <laughs> something around when I was, I don't know, 10 to 18. Um, there I was playing lots of RPG Maker games and I realized when I was creating them myself that I copied lots of things, mostly without even knowing, without realizing I, I copied. And I did not want this to happen anymore later on. So um, the thing really is when I, when I write blog articles, I don't read any other blog articles. And this is a little similar when I write books. I have been writing books for around about 10 years now, even though most of them were just concepts and the actual releasing books just started like a year ago. However, during this time, I read, I really almost read no books at all, no literature, except for, of course, what I had to read in school or university for example as i'm from germany um in, in german class we had to read uh this book over here i know you can't see it but you might be able to hear it it's a book from johann wolfgang von goethe and it's called faust um you you probably heard this before it's not the not dr faustus but faust faust as the title faust part one and um it is a very, very well-known book by Goethe. 
It's a very successful and, uh, well, I, I read it in school, but only because I had to read it in school. Um, same goes for other books like, um, oh, the German name is Nathan der Weise, which kind of means Nathan the Wise. And uh, I also had to, well, we had to read lots of uh, German books. But later, uh, I also had to read some English books, for example, Shakespeare's Hamlet or Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream or Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility. Uh, but also, let me think, there was, for example... Uh, Golding's Lore of the Flies, uh, which was obligatory for me to read in English. Um, but most of these books I only read because I had to. All the other books that I read in my life were from before, before I started writing. That was, for example, I, I remember I um, in, indirectly read uh, one or two Harry Potter books. I never read all the horror Harry Potter books. I watched all the movies, but never read all the books. Shame to me. And I realized that I read the whole first season of Warrior Cats by... Oh, what was her name? I think it was Erin Hunter or Erin Hunters. No, I think it was Erin Hunter. I'm not too sure, though, right now. And there were some post-war German literature that I read because I was interested in it. For example, uh, The Diary of Anne Frank. Um, like, you know, but, but I was more interested in these for the history aspects, not the reading a book literature-ish aspect. And if I look around in my room, I actually see lots of books. I have so many books and, and not just not just like school and university books but I have lots of fictional literature like really a lot and, and this goes from poems for example um, I, I adore uh, Rupi Kaua, Kaua I think Rupi Kaua is her name I, I, I'm not too sure I think she's in she's an Indish English or Indish American poet and, well, it's, it's basically a book of collected poems by her for a certain subject the book is about. And I also have other old literature like uh, Robinson Crusoe. I also have uh, some copies of excerpts of Beowulf, which is old English literature, like <laughs> way ago, like thousands of years ago. And, um, but only excerpts. I, I don't have a whole copy. I'm not even sure if a whole copy of it exists. I I actually don't think it does, but I might be wrong. And well, I have, uh, what is that? Oh yeah, right. I have Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and so on and so on. I do have lots of books, but I never read them. And I can't really tell why. There are also some some books that my brother and my sister lent me or even gifted me, which I also sadly never read. For example, I have um, two 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 books by Pratchett. I just I can't recall how they were how they were called. I think it was the I think it was the first and the second one of the what's Discworld series I think I have them here but never read them and also my uh, sister uh, gifted to me a version of JD Salinger's uh, The Catcher in the Rye which is supposed to be such a great book but I never got to read it because I I don't know I have I have actually by now I have trouble reading novels myself which is so contradictory because I barely do anything else in my free time than writing books. So why the hell can I do that? But I can't read. And maybe this is just very psychological, a very psychological error of me that, that I don't know, I, I kind of have this barrier of reading 
because I'm really, really afraid of anyone telling me, oh, you stole the writing style of that and that author and so on. Because I realized that I had this on YouTube. I was, I was doing Let's Plays on YouTube for 10 years. And over that time, I barely watched any YouTube. Um, I think I watched one Let's Player and two other channels that had nothing to do with Let's Play. So Let's Plays is, for anyone who doesn't know, it's uh, recording yourself, how you play video games and commenting on it and then upload it. Uh, it's kind of entertainment for video game uh, interested people. And I had this one format this one video series where suddenly people came and told and told me to like go get away piss off because i was just stealing it in a bad quality way but i didn't even know the original i never intended to steal because i, I didn't even watch anything else and i really also there when i did youtube i really tried not to watch too much youtube because i didn't want to be the one people tell who's stealing and uh, this is kind of, well, yeah, same barrier for me with reading books. I want to read all these books I have here, but each and every time I have them in my hand and, and try to start reading them, I'm like, oh, but, but what if I get inspiration? And then somebody says, oh, you just stole it from that and her and him and them. And I'm really afraid of that. That, that really is some kind of anxiety that I have a built up over the past years um, when I started writing. And this is a problem because I really, actually, I really enjoy reading. But, but sometimes it's hard. So I'm glad that I had to read lots of books in university and I still have to because this is like my, my only chance to, to get into reading because in my free time I just can't get myself to do so. But I am planning on changing that. Um, well, at least when, when I have like published five books. I have currently published two books and the third one is just around the corner. And the fourth one is already finished. And the fifth one is, well, in the works and about to be finished. So sometime within the next one or two years, I will have five books published. And maybe at that time I can, I can gladly say I have my own style and I didn't copy it from anyone because I wasn't reading anything. So now I can start reading because I already have my style and it won't really change. However, about these things that I have read, what did I like and, and what did I not like? I want to introduce you to, well, to my pleasures and displeasures of reading. But before that, I'm, I'm gonna go to my shelf, open it up and have a quick look at what I have inside. But I can't, because I can't recall what there is, there's lots of books. I'm just gonna have a quick glimpse. While you stay here, I will not, I will not make a break. I will be back in 10 seconds. Maybe it will be a little quiet for these 10 seconds. But that's okay, right? You can survive. All right. All right. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I just realized there are three books in there that I started reading and I enjoyed them a lot. Like, I loved them. But then again, I was so afraid that I would, that, that someone would tell me, oh, you stole the style of that author, that I put them away after reading like 10 pages. And I want, I want, to, I want to speak about those three books at first, before I come to those I have actually finished reading and that I liked and that I don't like, I didn't like. Um, the first one I want to speak about is uh, Ian Fleming's James Bond series because I, I know this might sound weird to some of you because like everybody knows the James Bond and the, the movies the 007 movies by uh, UN Productions and I've also seen them all I, I love them it's a franchise I really really enjoy but I'm also I was also really enjoying the books or 
the first book that I started reading and then put away because I was afraid of uh, things I said earlier. And I think Ian Fleming, the first book, by the way, was uh, Casino Royale. I think this first book or this, this this whole writing style of him is so amazing. I really love the way he writes. Um, I really enjoy it. I really, I think it's inspiring, even though this is contradictory because I am like trying hard to not get inspired in that way. Um, but it's so enjoyable. It's such a great thing, such a great style. And I'm really, I, I'm extremely looking forward to, to read this. And after I read it, I want to read all the others because I was such a big fan of the movie series. Like I, I really, really, really love the James Bond movies. I have all of them on Blu-ray. I, uh, just, just recently, just one year ago, I met a marathon where I started watching Dr. No, and then watched all the way uh, to Spectre one movie a day, <laughs> like for, for 24 days, uh, plus, plus the extra ones. There's the, the no, there were three extra ones. There are two other re uh, versions of Casino Royale, and there's one other version of, um, I think, of Thunderball. And, uh, but those three are not like official James Bond movies, but I also watched them. So for like uh, 27 days in a row, I watched one of them each and every day uh, because I loved it. And I was looking forward for the release of No Time to Die, but it, it didn't release back then. I'm very excited to watch it this year, finally, because I really am a big fan. So I'm super excited to read uh, where it came from. And uh, I, I always love to read where those big things uh, come from. Um, so I'm also excited to one day read all the Harry Potter books, maybe even the, I don't know, the, the Lord of the Rings books. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not too sure about this because honestly, I'm not the, I'm not the biggest fan of the Lord and, of the Rings and the Hobbit. Like I, I only watched the movies, all six of them, and I enjoyed them, but I'm, I'm not a fan. I don't love them. I could watch them once or maybe twice in my life or maybe even thrice in my life, but that should suffice. Uh, I, I know people who watch all of these movies at least once a year. I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> um, but let's come to the other ones. I'm really, really excited to read uh, once I start reading <laughs> again. Um, second one is... Uh, oh, I uh, have to Google the name again because I can I can never... I think it's Sapkowski, right? Sub, Sub, Sapkowski. And Andrei Sapkowski, I think. Uh, this is the author of the Witcher series. I loved playing the Witcher games. I loved watching the Witcher TV series. And I also have the first uh, Witcher book in my shelf on English. And when I started reading it, I only read like five or six, maybe seven, eight, nine, ten pages. But I loved it. I, I was only like in maybe maybe reading for 10 minutes and I, I loved it so much that I wanted to keep going but you know I told you about my fears so I stopped reading but I'm really looking to uh, looking forward to uh, read the whole series because I think this style matches my taste a lot the English style I don't know about the German style but I really prefer English books over German ones even though I'm native German I'm not the biggest fan of the German language this counts, by the way, for any type of media consume. Like, I, I hate listening to German music. I, I can't watch movies that have German voiceovers or play video games that have German voiceovers. This is, this is terrible for me. And I rarely ever watch German YouTube videos or whatever. I just I just don't like it. I, don't, I think I don't like the language. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Uh, however, I'm really looking forward to... Um, reading more of Sapkowski's Witcher. This is quite similar to to Ian Fleming's 007. I think I like 007 more than Witcher. I always like those more modern ser um, scenarios more than those high fantasy med medieval series uh, scenarios. Um, sometimes those work for me, b but not all the time. Same with, with Lord of the Rings. Sometimes I can watch it but then I maybe have to make a break for five or six years because it's it's too much too much fiction for me then you know uh, sometimes 
It's, uh, doesn't doesn't fit my taste all the time, but sometimes it does. Like I love, for example, Final Fantasy. I can always play Final Fantasy. Uh, that's video games, if you don't know. Uh, however, uh, there's a third one I spoke about, a third book that I started reading, and I enjoyed it so much. Jesus Christ, I I loved it. Uh, it is a book. Um, it is a collection of short stories, and I only read one of them. I think it's like three or four, four short stories. I think, no, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I think it's seven uh, short stories in this book. I only read the first of them, but entirely, and this is like probably the, the, the best text I've, I've ever written. It is by the author Harlan Ellison. By the way, I have to check where... He comes from. I want to know if he's American or British. American. Okay, uh, that's important for me because um, of a certain university aspect that I'm currently researching on. But um, it doesn't matter. I'm not like whatever. Uh, let's keep going. Um, Harlan Ellison is an American author who wrote well some stories, and one of them is a short story called "I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream." For those of you, again, who are interested in video games, there's also a point-and-click adventure called I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. Um, and I'm also extremely excited to play it one day. My uh, Let's Play channel that I mentioned earlier, it's German though, um, it is a Let's Play channel that focuses on point-and-click adventures. So I'm, uh, I think this will definitely fit there one day. And uh, this is a short story. Um, in here, it's just like, just like 15 pages long. I read this entirely and was, I was so like, it, it, I don't know, I loved it so much. And I have this a book here where there are like seven short stories of him in here. And I liked the first one so much that I'm extremely excited to read all the others because I think, uh, I think it's just the way Allison writes and and things that amazes me so much uh that i am well yeah extremely extremely excited to to read more of it oh jesus this one was so good damn it was so good yeah I, um I, I can really 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 i can't come up with a word dang it <laughs> Just say recommend. No Google recommend. <laughs> I don't know why. I just forgot the word to recommend. Um, yeah, this is the the three things that I am most excited for reading when I will finally start reading again. But there are more. Um, I have some. I think over here. Yeah, there are a couple of books. A couple of more books that I have just recently bought and they are all British. Uh, one is by Emily Bronte. It's called uh, Wuthering Heights. Um, I think this is a, I'm not too sure. I think it, it is from Victorian times or romantic times. No, I think it's, I think it's from Victorian times. I'm not too sure. Um, but someone um, recommended that to me. So I just bought it because I, I found out it's not too expensive and it looked cool. So, um, yeah, also I really, really trust the, the person that recommended that. So this is a book I will read. And also I have ordered the original Bram Stoker's Drac Dracula, which I'm also extremely excited for. I, I already read um, the original Frankenstein by Mary Shelley and liked it a lot. So I believe that the original Bram Stoker Dracula is also going to be something I really enjoy. Um, I ordered some more books, two more books to be precise, but they have not yet arrived. They are both by uh, Orwell. Uh, one of them is Animal Farm and the other one is uh, 1984. And those are books that are very, very well known and supposedly of, of very high quality 
Uh, so I also believe that I am going to like it, especially in 1984, because it's uh, people say I've never read it. People say uh, some kind of you know it it was written I think in the 1930s and 1984 was future back then, so it was like a future dystopia if I'm not mistaken. And this is a, a topic that I really enjoy a lot, which is also why I, I want to read uh, Aldous Huxley's um, Brave New World one day. And I think there are also others uh, in that direction that I want to read. Um, but yeah, I've, I've never written them, uh, written them, <laughs> of course. I've never read them. Um, and I'm also very excited to write some kind of dystopia story one day. I think... At some point in time, Backfire will will also have a little dystopian character, um, which which oftenly is present in in the survival book a genre. But uh, yeah, we will talk about that at a later time. Now. I have talked a lot about why I don't read or why I haven't read in the past 10 years. And I talked a lot about what I will read. But I haven't really talked about the books that I actually read and how I liked them and why I did and perhaps why I didn't. And be aware there might be some very, very unpopular opinions coming ahead. First thing I want to say, and this might not be too unpopular, but perhaps uh, for German literature, I really enjoyed Faust. Um, I, I liked Goethe's Faust. I know there are lots of people, especially in my age, I'm, I'm quite young, and uh, lots of people in my age didn't like it. They didn't like the way it was written and so on. And I can understand because it is, it is old and it feels old. But for this specific case, I enjoyed it. I loved it. Uh, maybe I didn't love it, but I liked it a lot. And yeah, I am also planning on, on reading it one day again. And maybe even the second part. There's a Faust part two. There's another book by a German author, or oh, I'm not sure, I think it's an Austrian author. Um, I'm not too sure right now. Um, it's called Die Traumnovelle. I have to look up if there is an English name for that. Um, it's also a very uh, short novel. I'm not even sure if it counts as a novel, to be honest. In English, it's called Rhapsody, a dream novel, or sometimes uh, also known as dream story. Yeah, it's by Austrian writer Arthur Schnitzler. And I think the, the movie Eyes Wide Shut uh, by, by uh, Stanley Kubrick, I think this one is based on Die Traumnovelle, the Rhapsody dream novel, dream story thing. Um, it's a very, very short book, as I said before. Maybe I can... Um, yeah, it's just just a little over 100 pages long. And I can tell that I and that I really enjoyed it. Um, this is one of the few books written originally in German that I really enjoyed. Because most of the German um, authors, especially from that time or those times, I can't enjoy at all. For example, I, I personally... and I. Maybe I'm gonna get haters here who who love German literature or whatever. I I think that Friedrich Schiller is one of the worst authors that exists in this world. I hated all of his books and I read lots of them, mostly for school reasons. And even when I reread them later, when I was an adult and understood them better, I still hated them. I really, 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 really hate the way Friedrich Schiller writes. I don't like him at all. And I also think that most of the other uh, books by Goethe are also not good. Like Faust is good, maybe also the second part. But apart from that, he has some terrible texts. And I really 
think they should be taken off of uh, German school canon. Like every German child has to read some Goethe in, in school. And I think they should not do this anymore in the future. Maybe Faust, but, but not all the others. Most of them are really not too good, to be honest. In my opinion, though. In my opinion. And, well, apart from that, let me think. Uh, I, I, uh, I mentioned Nathan the Weise, so uh, Nathan the Wise. I'm not sure if that's the actual English name. Let me check. It is is the actual English name, yes, Nathan the Wise. Uh, it's a novel by Gotthold Ephraim Lessing, uh, and this is also one that I enjoyed. I, I read it in in the A-levels in school, like in my, I think in my 12th year at school, um, and I liked it, even though it's, it's lots about religious uh, religion, and I'm not the biggest fan of religion, to be honest, especially not as a topic in books, but this was kind of in a way that I really enjoyed it. And yeah, I also read it in German um, and it was cool. And I think there's there's another, uh, I think, German author who's called E.T.A. Hoffmann, who also wrote some good books, but I didn't read any of them. I think. I think. Or was that by Hoffmann? Oh, yes, I read. Okay, I read one of them. It's called Klein Saches Genannt Cinnabar, or in English, Little Zaches Calls Cinnabar. And I think this was terrible, but I think he has good ones. Not this one, though. <laughs> um, yeah, but apart from that, I, I really... I don't know, there are some, some good modern German authors. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of, for example, uh, Sebastian Fitzek who I think wrote some good stories, but I don't know. But I, I know people who like him a lot, and, and I know that them and me have kind of similar tastes in stories, so maybe that's kind of true. And there's another one. Uh, how is it called? Um, let me check. There's a book uh, that I know. Frank Schätzing. He's also a German modern or postmodern uh, author. Who read? Uh, who wrote books like *Der Schwarm*? It is in English called *The Swarm* by Frank Schätzing, and I personally haven't read it. I don't know if it's good, but I heard people saying it's good. Also, my girlfriend currently reads it and says it's amazing. So, well, maybe there's something to it. Yeah. Apart from that, uh, let's come a little. Let's come back to to English literature books that I read. To be honest, I haven't read too many English novels um, and short stories and, and plays. Um, let me... Oh, shall I start with a negative example? No, let me start with a positive example. For university, I had to read a book called um, Lore of the Flies by William Golding. And this one was terrific it was great it was a very very good one it was quite short with i think less than 300 pages i think it was like 281 if i'm not mistaken or 280 i don't know and uh, it, it was enjoyable it was enjoyable it was like close to post-war literature so post postmodern. um i think the book is from might be 45 i'm not too sure though uh around about this time and it also uh, starts with being a war story but doesn't really stay a war story not at all um but it's good it, it had, had a nice story it had some good tension build up for what it was supposed to be and what it wanted to be and uh the the way it was written was was very well very 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 fluently to follow and yeah just just very enjoyable which i at first didn't think it would be because when i ordered the book i read some uh, some receptions some reviews and there were lots of people who had to read it in school like i had to read for example uh goethe books 
and uh, they 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 were students and they were complaining oh it's so extremely boring i don't want to read that shit and and then i ordered it and i was so afraid it would be bad and then i read it and it was actually good uh, at least in my opinion so <laughs> i'm i'm happy i did that and uh, wasn't well letting myself get get scared off by by those uh, receptions and, and reviews um what else did I read in English? Oh, there is a very good one by a by an Italian British author. I think I think she is British, but then later went to Italy to, to stay there. I think, if I'm not mistaken, might be the other way around. Um, but no, I think that's right the way I said it. Uh, her name is Muriel Spark, and she wrote a novel called The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie. Uh, this is also a novel that many, many people, also of my fellow students, thought was very boring. But I enjoyed it a lot. I think it was extremely great. Like, like I was, I was surprised because um, I heard some some fellow students in, univer in university speak about it, and they were like, "I've never ever read a book that's that boring, or even more boring. Not possible." And then I read it and I liked it and um, that was weird, but I'm happy that I liked it. Um, yeah, but let's get to a negative example. And look, once again, perhaps unpopular opinion, but I discussed the writings of William Shakespeare. <laughs> I have to be honest, I haven't read all of his books. And there are lots of people, including my brother and my sister, who say that I have to read Macbeth, that this one is actually good. But I didn't, not yet. What I did read is Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream and Shakespeare's Hamlet. And those two were, in, in my opinion at least, terrible. <laughs> I really didn't enjoy them at all. Like when, when I read them, I was constantly like massaging my forehead and shaking my head. And I was I was just waiting for it to end because I really didn't enjoy it. I, I was like, oh, why the hell is Shakespeare so popular? Why does everybody like him? And why, why did he get so much attention? And I don't understand. I still don't. Like, of course, I, I see that in terms of uh, style, in terms of uh, art, like like metaphors and stuff. I, he did some good things. But I think there are so many authors, even from that time, that are more interesting than that. Uh, ugh. And, and I was so frustrated because for uh, one exam, I was uh, able or I was allowed to read anything I want, but I, I had to, to read 10 books and send them in to my professor and said, these are my 10 books and I want to be examined on these 10 books. And I could, I could almost entirely decide which books I wanted to include. Like five of them had to be from seminar context, but the other five had to be um, my own books that I decided for and, and so on. But one of them was always, it had to be Hamlet. Hamlet had to be in this list. And that really annoyed me because from all these books, that I have and all these books that we had in the seminar context, like from all the books I could decide from, this was my least favorite, but it had to be an obligatory part of the exam. Oh, and that was annoying. That was not cool and I really didn't like it. Uh, I can't really explain why it, it just annoyed me the way I had to read it and, and the content was not interested interesting at all. I'm also not too interested in British history, I have to say. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Hamlet was about like, like a Danish king. And I think, uh, well, that was the connection to, to British story and I was just not interested in it. 
I have to be honest, um, didn't like it. And I don't like the way Shakespeare writes. I, I really don't. Um, unpopular opinion, I guess. But that's just the truth. Okay, another Shakespeare and another ranting. I also had to read a book that is kind of a spin-off to, to, I also think, to Hamlet, um, but not by Shakespeare. It was called um, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. I also didn't like that one. Um, I'm, I'm in general not the biggest fan of Renaissance literature or early modern English uh, literature. I like wh what what was before. Like I I like Beowulf. I like Canterbury Tales. Those are English and then Middle English literature. And I like what's after that. For example, all this. Um, I love. I like. I like some. Some of some of the books in, in Romanticism, even though not all of them. Uh, I like. I like Victorianism a lot. I think. If I'm not mistaken, all of the uh, Sherlock Holmes books by uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle are also Victorianism literature. And I really enjoyed what I read of that, even though I haven't read all of them yet. I think I also only read one, one of the short stories, <laughs> right? The Musgrave Ritual. And another one, but I can't. Oh, sorry, I can't recall the name of the other one that I wrote, uh, read. But those were great. I think in general that Victorianism is is a period of English literature that I enjoy, unlike Renaissance literature. Um, yeah. So as you can hear, I I have read more books than it first sounded like when I said I don't read at all and I didn't really read in the past 10 years. Yeah, there, there are a couple of books, but most of them I, I was forced to read in school or university context. And this is why I am really looking forward to reading what I like in hopefully the soon future, future not the far future. Okay, and uh, that should be it for today. I think you you got an idea of <laughs> what I like and dislike and what I read and don't read and what I want to read and didn't want to read and don't want to read. Um, I'm really excited to read your about your ideas. Like maybe you agree with me about, for example, Schiller and Shakespeare. Maybe you disagree. Or maybe you disagree about those I like. Maybe you disagree about Mirror Spark or disagree about Harlan Ellison and Ian Fleming. Or maybe you even disagree about Faust. Who knows? I'm excited to read about your opinions on that in the comment section below. And if you don't have opinions on that, maybe you didn't even write, read any of these. Oh, by the way, I want to read the Dune series. I really want to. The original one, though. Um, and apart from that, tell me in the comments what you have read and what you plan on reading. Maybe what you can recommend or what you would suggest that I read, like from from what I like. Maybe you, you know a book that I would really like. Please feel free to suggest it in the comment section or write any of your ideas and thoughts down there and your emotions whatever flame me for something i said i'm okay with that but i will flame back no i will try to be well nice with you so let's keep a nice climate down in the comment section as well okay that's episode two of uh, being an author jeff h mellum's author's podcast thing on youtube without pictures and uh yeah hear and read you all soon goodbye bye 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 bye